So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today I'm joined by Krista Sion, or Sion. Sion, <laughs> yeah. Sion, yeah. Uh, and she's the lead singer for the band Dialit. And Dialit yes. is a symphonic power metal band from Danbury, Connecticut. And when I, when I saw them, when I listened to the music, I felt like I, I would have sworn that you guys were from Europe. Yeah, yeah, everyone says that. Um, one of my favorite, uh, when we got reviewed back when we released Extinction Six, um, one of the reviewers was like, oh, there's this band from uh, Danbury, Connecticut. Not sure where in Europe that is, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, I know where Connecticut is, but yeah, <laughs> like usually symphonic uh, metal is like associated with Europe. So, uh, so yeah, I listened to the to the band. Uh, I listened to Extinction Six. I listened to Atrophy, and now the the new uh, EP that's coming out on April fifth, and it's called Alter. So, uh, yeah, I, I always enjoy talking to bands, uh, discovering bands. So. Uh, for people that don't know Dialift, uh, tell us how 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 the band formed. Um, so the band formed uh, almost nine years ago now, so it's been a long time. In um, I, I had just graduated college, um, kind of aimless. Uh, so I and one thing I'd always wanted to do was be in a symphonic power metal band. Um, I grew up listening to Nightwish and Phantom Temptation and Epica. They're all my favorite bands. Um, and it wasn't something I ever like got to do in high school and college. And I was like, well, gotta, maybe before I like entirely grow up, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try it. So I posted an ad on Craigslist, um, and Alistair, the guitarist, uh, answered. He was, you know, a year older than me. He lived in the next town over, um, which is kind of crazy because like, there's not a lot of people who listen to the type of music that we do. Um, and especially, you know, not people who are, who are as talented as Alistair. Um, and he reached out and we started um, writing. And um, over the next couple of years, we met Colin and Mark through um, mutual friends. Colin plays uh, drums and Mark plays bass. Um, and that was how Dialith was born. Um, we released Through Stone actually before Mark was in the band. Um, so Alistair actually did the, the bass on that. Through Stone is the, is the short EP we, re we released before Extinction Sex. Um, so that's, that's the birth of Dialith right there. Yeah. What, the, what does the band name mean? Uh, so the band name is, uh, means Through Stone, um, in Greek. Uh, which is why our first EP was called Through Stone. Um, it doesn't doesn't have any particular significance. It was just a just a name Alistair thought of. He thought was cool. Um, we were just you know throwing band names out there, and that one stuck. No, no, it it sounds cool, and it sounds like the type of metal that you play. So you you were you saying like in the area that you grew up? Because I know in the states, I uh, I don't know if symphonic metal. Is as you know, there's a lot of thrash metal bands and death metal bands, but I I, I don't know why symphonic metal. Uh, I think maybe like a symphonic progressive metal band that I know is Symphony X, and they're from New Jersey. But mm -hmm. you know, it's more common for the Europe. So you said that you were inspired by Nightwish, Epica. Uh, so the singing that you do, you know, you have a lot of like different styles of singing, and especially on this new EP, especially the new single. Uh, shadow dancer like there's a lot of like middle eastern like vibes to it and i saw the music video where you're doing the the dancing uh, mm -hmm. uh how did that came about that you wanted to incorporate more of that middle eastern sound into the sound of the band um so it was um we we had just brought it up Alistair really wanted to do um something like that I love it uh I am uh my dad's side of the family is Lebanese okay. um so um yeah I'm not I wouldn't say like that I'm that I know a lot about it but it was it's definitely something I would like like to know more about um and 
when and and we had experimented a little bit um with some other songs with that um middle eastern sound this one just really brought it to the forefront yeah, um, I, I heard a, a little bit of ex, in extinction six yeah yeah but, definitely but yeah shadow dancer you know even the music video is pretty cool you guys are playing uh you did the dancing did did you do your own choreography i did um so <laughs> I just, um, I didn't do like choreography. What I did was just learn a few basic belly dancing steps. Um, and then if it looks good, that's all up to our videographer. Uh, he is the one who edited, edited it to make it look, uh, look pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Just the good thing is that none of the guys were doing the dance, but yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a pretty interesting song. And the album, uh, the EP, sorry, the EP has, uh, it's four tracks, but the, before Shadow Dancer, there's like a prelude intro to that song. And you have the uh, a very infectious track with Iron Bound that that one, I, I got a lot of like in like within temptation vibes to that song. Uh, and then you have uh, the written red, which opens up the album. So uh, let's talk a, a little bit about themes, because I read that this is the second EP, because there's a trilogy of EPs. First, you put Atrophy in 2021. Now you're putting Alter 2024. Uh, so I'm guessing uh, maybe next year you're putting the the the, the next EP that follows. Uh, is there a story between these EPs? I wouldn't say it's a story, but more um, theme. Um, so Atrophy, uh, a lot of it was written during lockdown. Um, and it, it does feel a little bit like going back to the roots um, of, of all of our, our um, influences, all of our writing. Um, and then Alter is, the theme about Alter is more like transformation. Um, and I don't, I, this was probably done unconsciously. Um, but in the years since Atrophy was released, the whole band, um, personally and um, as a band, like as a whole, uh, we've all changed a lot in that time. Um, we've all gotten older. Um, like I said, Dialog was formed. It uh, happens to the best of now. us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it happens to the best of us. Yeah. Um, but I also think that it shows in the in the music. Um, there's a lot of new influence in Alter. Uh, we're not quite so stuck in that. Um, and sometimes people people like metalheads get get really stuck in like, well, it's not metal, so it can't. So we can't be influenced by it. But um, I think Alter really kind of throws that away. Um, there's a saxophone solo in Ironbound. Um, there's the Middle Eastern influence, uh, that whole drum solo in Shadow Dancer. Um, and then in Writhing Red, we've got a lot of that Celtic folk metal influence. Um, so it's kind of just throwing expectations of what we wanted to be to the wind. Um, still like still sticking to metal. It's still, it's still obviously a very heavy metal album. It's or, sorry, metal, yeah. Yeah. But it definitely doesn't. It, it definitely doesn't try to to contain itself, which um, I think the the title maybe the title unconsciously influenced that. But um, I'm hoping that uh, with that third one, we kind of really come into into the sound. We get we we gather everything we've we've done all the way from back in 2017 when Three Stone was released um, up until the next, the conclusion of the, the trilogy. Um, can't reveal too much at this time, but oh, no, um, no. yeah. Uh, we're here to talk about Alter, that's the one. Yes. The one right <laughs> now. Do, do you think, uh, because I know a lot of bands are doing this, that right now with how music is consumed and people's short attention span that doing EPs is the most cost productive basically because like, uh, like people like uh, have a, like back in the nineties, like uh, people like their long albums, but <laughs> but now people like like shorter type of like albums. So uh, is that a conscious thing that you that after you put out your self titled that is an hour long? You said like let's do a piece, and I'm guessing the COVID had something to do, the lockdown had something to do with that, with releasing like burst of 
of like four songs within each was that part of like that you decided like maybe th this is the best way to keep the the fans uh with new music and not and not you know and putting out music like in short bursts yes um so extinction six was an incredibly ambitious album especially for um a band like dialist that has no label backing has no industry connections um and we were you know we funded it ourselves um and after extinction six was released there we we were thinking that if we were to do another big album like that it would take years and years and years and years um to really do something to that level so in order to um to kind of you know keep relevant and to to be releasing stuff at the um with the, with the production and with the quality that we really wanted the only feasible way to do it was through EPs um just financially and um creatively um because we just we can't like we all have regular jobs we can't just you know crank out music Thank you. um one <laughs> after the other yeah <laughs> this is um, all sponsored by myself and the couch productions <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly um so yeah it just um it to keep relevant to to be able to produce the quality that we wanted um we we had to do eps rather than full albums yeah but I, and i think uh with today's culture eps make make sense yes, uh, i make albums definitely. but yeah i it's hard and you know, like time consuming. So EPs is a way of getting their music, getting music and have people like, hey, they have new music. So, and you know, it's the album's like a fifth, I think the EP is like 15 minutes, I think. Like it's like a 15 minute yeah. EP, it goes by quickly. And let's talk a little bit about like your writing process. Like uh, when you're writing lyrics, what is the process? Uh, how, how do you focus on, on the themes and what you want to do? So specifically lyrics? Uh, yeah, we can talk okay. lyrics here, yeah. Okay, um, so lyrics are typically the last thing um, that we write. Um, I have been experienced, uh, I'm sorry, experimenting with um, something, something new where I do lyrics and melody first, um, but up until now, everything has been music first. So I'll get, and, and um, Alistair writes everything in MIDI. So I get um, basically a, a full song, like like a, a full song in MIDI. And mm -hmm. I get to just listen to that song for a while, um, listen to the, the feel, and then um, sort of write based around uh, the emotion that the music itself produces. Um, so for Shadow Dancer in particular, um, Alistair uh, sent me the file, the, the whole file. And at the time I was really, um, I'm very interested in uh, a lot of ancient cultures. Um, so specifically, um, at the time I was reading about, um, the mythology of the Proto-Indo-Europeans, um, and the, the way that ancient Near East mythology and Proto-Indo-European mythology intertwines with that, um, and since it does have that Middle Eastern feel, I was like, well, I'll, I'll write it about, um, the um like the mythology of the ancient near east and and try to evoke those images it's not particularly about any you know god or goddess or myth in general uh, specifically but more in general it's about um just those kind of kind of emotions how how we as people today think about um like mesopotamian or or mythology or something like that yeah, no, I, I like I like a lot of mythology. It's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. So I want to show the artwork of the EP because it's a pretty cool artwork. And you know, you for an EP, you know, you you put your time and care into this artwork, and it shows. So 
tell me a little bit about what you're trying to convey with this artwork and, and who did the artwork? Uh, so the artist is Marcia Sokolowska. Uh, she's a Polish artist. Uh, she has done all of our covers except for that very first one. Um, very, very talented. Uh, and so when, um, after Extinction Six was released, uh, we kind of just dove right into the EPs. And the idea was that the series would be, uh, you know, they would all have themes, like I had mentioned art earlier. Mm -hmm. And Atrophy, um, it the the first uh in it's cold, yeah, it's like a winter. Yeah, it's winter, yeah. So um atrophy, it it conveys this sort of wintry feel. It um it's, you know, a little bit about staying in one place. Um, and then, and which is, which kind of seems like winter. Um, mm -hmm. And then in Alter, it's supposed to be spring. So spring is about transformation. It's about uh, new life um, and uh, flowers blooming and, and, you know, everything is, is new and warm. Yeah, uh, unless you that... live in Puerto Rico. <laughs> and every year oh. it's, a, it's a different versions of hot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But, but um, yeah. mm. So that's, yeah. yeah um, and then there's in the, the third in the series um, is will be different. Sorry, I can't say more than that. No, but, don't say like, yeah. Let's focus on this one. So yeah, this one, I like the artwork a lot. And the three the three songs are really good and uh they all have something different like you had iron uh, the iron bound has the saxophone and it's like more fast paced and that one yes. reminded me of like a within temptation and the first one is all about within ready it's about like uh facing anger right yes like is is it like uh like when you're facing anger and you have to get anger out in a healthy way I yeah so uh, it's not Ryan great Grimm. stuff from Limp Biscuit. I'm sorry. It's it sounds nothing like break stuff from Limp Biscuit where it's like no. super direct. <laughs> this is a a healthy way to channel your anger. <laughs> yeah, um, Rising Red is really uh, it it was it was a hard song to write I think because it has two different moods. So it has that kind of like dark verse. And then it, it it goes into that um, like more upbeat chorus. So I wanted to write about um, you know th this kind of change that you you go through when you think about all the bad stuff that's happening in the world, and it's like oh I'm so angry about it, like I have to talk about it. And then but but eventually you can't you can't talk about it forever. At some point you have to you know do something yeah so so yeah it's writhing red is really really about that yeah no it's a, it's a great all the songs are something that they have all have in common and in the, your all your albums is that there's a catchiness to them uh there, there <laughs> and there's a catchiness without falling into because there's some bands that fall into like the the corny territory like dragon force <laughs> like yeah it's being catchy without being corny so i really like it so uh for you as a vocalist like uh what is because i know this type of like uh symphonic metal is very demanding the singing uh, what is your process like when you're going to sing like how do you prepare your voice uh basic um i i sing all the time um because it's never something you want to stop doing because you because then you never get better so I do sing all the time, even if it's just like I'm in the kitchen cooking um, and or, or like commuting in my car. I'm singing. I'm sure I look crazy to everybody around me. Um, but uh, specifically when it comes to shows or recording, um, I run through the set a lot. Uh, so I'll do my my normal vocal warm ups and then um, I'll run through the set as it would be played um if we're recording then i'll run through whatever song i'm doing next um and then 
uh, try to experiment with, with different ways to sing. Um, in Extinction 6, I did a lot of the really high operatic vocals. Um, but for the EPs, my goal was to really try, well, not necessarily belting, but definitely try to get lower into the mix voice. Uh, so the mix of head and head and chest voice. Mm -hmm. um, I've sung soprano my entire life. Uh, when I was, even when I was like in choirs in middle and high school, I was always soprano. Um, so it's a hard habit to get out of, but, um, using more of that mix or chest voice definitely uh it adds a lot of power which is really what i wanted to go for in these eps i wanted i wanted to get away from the daintiness um mm -hmm. and and really really force some power into it yeah no and i think yeah i think yeah, the vocals really shine through on on, on these songs you know uh, i think it's a obviously for symphonic metal like the voice is very important like uh Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like uh just like look at band like Iron Maiden. They went from Punky with Paul Diano to Bruce Dickinson. Like <laughs> the voice <laughs> gives the the band like the different the difference. So uh so you mentioned singing in the car. What's your go to uh carpool song to sing? <laughs> oh, okay. So when nobody can hear me, I really try unleash the archers. Um, because I think Britney Slays just has the most incredible voice. Um, and I would love, I, I like try to emulate it. So I really do Unleash the Archers, um, Test Your Metal, which mm. is a very vocally demanding song. Um, so when nobody else can hear me, I, that's the one, that's the one I do. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 yeah, that's a cool thing to do. So uh, so what's next for Dialit? I know you're releasing this. Is this going to be only like digital or are there going to be some physical formats of the AP? Uh, so Altair comes, uh, you can buy it digitally or you can buy a Digipack. Um, I just got those uh, the other week. They're sitting in my house. Mm -hmm. um, so you can order those. Um, the and there's also um some shirts we've got long sleeves and short sleeves um with uh we had some art done specifically for shadow dancers so they have the shadow dancer art on it it's a snake in an hourglass um yeah i saw i saw the single there there yeah <laughs> the hourglass, yeah um and so it's pretty we don't we don't do records or anything um it's just not financially viable at this point no i know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, we've had some people request it which which feels nice but it's but unfortunately we just can't do like, it like give me money <laughs> <laughs> like like I, I i bought some records but i they're too expensive too you know like and and yeah. life life <laughs> keeps yeah everything is expensive, expensive like, now like oh it's too gosh. should i should i feed my kids <laughs> buy the record i think i need to feed my kids first <laughs> Uh, before I buy a record but you know Krista it's been great chatting with you you know you're very bubbly and very nice uh oh, thank you so that's nice to you know uh to talk to up and coming bands that you know it's all you're you're doing it yourself and you can tell that there's a passion because then I'm gonna post, post a link for the Shadow Dancer music video because it's a great looking video you know it can it it, it looks like uh like videos from of you know all those bands that you that you love uh so it's pretty cool uh are you guys playing some some shows or something like so yes uh so we are playing the mad with power festival in wisconsin um this summer august 2nd um the festival's two days august 2nd and 3rd but we're playing august 2nd um madison wisconsin at the sylvie uh so if you're in the midwest definitely get tickets to that um and we are trying to book a um a release show um but we're just trying to to iron out the details on that so so nothing nothing per, uh confirmed right now yeah no awesome so uh so be, before i i let you go krista like uh besides you know you like symphonic metal and that stuff but do you have like a guilty pleasure <laughs> like a like a like a band that you like that people will be like oh she likes that because like eh, I think everyone does. What's your guilty pleasure? My guilty pleasure. 
Um, okay. Uh, I, I do love um, like Irish uh, folk music. I wouldn't call that a really a guilty pleasure, but like if it's not metal, I like I like Irish folk music. Uh, Florence and the Machine, I really like pop music. There's there's nothing to Florence and the Machine has a, a amazing voice. Uh, it's yeah. not what I listen to, but I do videos with a friend of mine called Señorita Sabrosura, and we she like we actually reviewed the the last album from her on the on the channel, and you know it's pretty it's pretty good. It's pretty cool yeah. Music. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So anything you like to say to the Dialif uh, fans before we go? Dialif fans. Um, thank you so much because it, it feels as a small band, like any, any little comments we get that are like, oh, I love this band or like, I can't wait for this EP. Like that feels really good because, you know, that's why it's, it's sort of why we do it. Um, it feels nice to, to share music with people. It feels nice to, um, to have that kind of feedback. Um, so just thank you. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Well, Thank you for paying attention to us. <laughs> yeah. No, no. The, the bands, I'm telling you, the DCP is really good. And the, uh, your debut album, you know, it's really good. So people, if you haven't heard Dialit, what the fuck are you waiting for? Uh, go check them out. You know, uh, you know, there's the, all, the people are complaining. There's no newer bands. Yes, they are. But, <laughs> but you need to support them so they can do more music because it's, you know, the thing right now is like there's uh, music is more accessible than ever, but also being more accessible, I think people don't value it as much as before. It's, yeah. And sometimes a lot of like great music gets lost in the mix. Sometimes my favorite albums from the year are from lesser known bands uh, that are putting out like music that it, it's more real. Like, you know, they're uh, they're not trying to cater to the audience. You're just doing yeah. something you love. So. Uh, I'll post the link for the band page so people that want to know more about the band and if they want to support the band, they do. And uh, it was, it's been a pleasure having you virtually here on the couch, Krista. So people, check out Dialate. So until next time, people, this is Hector, the Shield Dude on a Couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>